It's natural to feel a sense of nostalgia and even a bit of sadness when we see our favorite MMA fighters slowing down and getting knocked and choked out by their counterparts who they'd have chewed up and spat out in their heyday. But that's life in a nutshell. Nothing lasts forever. Here's a list of five UFC legends who fought past their primes and suffered lasting damage. Welcome to the MMA sector. At one point in his career, people seriously started to believe that Tyrone Woodley was the chosen one, the man who had what it took to be the greatest of all time. Woodley, a wrestler with probably the most devastating overhand right of his era, earned notable wins against Paul Daly, Josh Koshak, Carlos Condon, and Kelvin Gastelum, before knocking out ruthless Robbie Lawler with his trademark overhand right to win the belt in style. His first couple of title defenses, both of which were against Stefan Wonderboy Thompson, were below par, and they failed to impress UFC bigwigs as well as fight fans. Woodley stayed at distance and waited for an opportunity to land a big shot or two while attempting takedowns and having a very low output. Their second fight in particular was a snooze fest, as both men landed a combined total of only 107 strikes through five rounds with Woodley winning by the thinnest of margins because he landed one strike more and secured a takedown. From there on, Woodley became one of Dana White's least favorite fighters, and he didn't do himself any favors when he put his title on the line against Damian Maya at UFC 214. T. Wood landed 57 strikes, while Maya landed 28, and the fight hardly impressed anyone. So when Woodley put his title on the line against the undefeated Darren Till at UFC 228, the UFC was low-key expecting the Brit to end the American's title run. That's when Woodley came out of his shell and rattled Till before choking him out in the second round to shock the world. In his next fight, however, Woodley lost to Kamara Usman, and he couldn't recover, losing three more times against Colby Covington, Gilbert Burns, and Vicente Luque, and taking a lot of damage in all of his fights. Woodley didn't stop there, however. After parting ways with the UFC in 2021, he signed to fight Jake Paul and lost by a split decision in their first match. In their second fight in December 2021, where Woodley stepped in on short notice, the former UFC champ was knocked out cold. Yet Woodley doesn't want to stop fighting as he recently called out Logan Paul. You know, I didn't think about that. Damn, that's a good idea. Logan was cracking. Hey, send a check. <laughs> you was talking last shit while I was fighting your brother, and I almost kicked your Polaroid off the boxing ring because he was distracting the fight, talking, and hitting the canvas and taking pictures. So if y'all want to do it again and flip the coin, let's get it cracking. October 14th? All right, well, I was about to get to training anyway. Let's get it in. Not a very good idea, Tyrone. If there's one thing we know about fighters like Chuck Liddell, it is that they are addicted to fighting and they find it extremely hard to let go. Now it's understandable that the human ego develops through competition, envy, and desires for respect, control, and power. And when you've spent a healthy amount of time at the top of the food chain, you want to soar to the same heights again. It's literally an obsession. For years, Chuck Liddell was the scariest man in the UFC, with his ice-cold knockouts against the best in the business, like Tito Ortiz, Renato Sobral, and Randy Couture. He was the GOAT of light heavyweight long before John Jones burst onto the scene, and the Iceman was considered the UFC's poster boy. But time and tide wait for none, even if you are a legend of the sport. Even when he was knocking out fighters left and right, he was taking damage and that ultimately piled up to the point where he wasn't the same anymore. After losing his light heavyweight title to Quentin Rampage Jackson, Liddell continued to fight in the hope of getting it back, but he ended up losing six out of seven fights with four consecutive knockout losses that forced him into retirement. The damage had already been done. Much like Chuck Liddell, BJ Penn was another OG of the fight game who was obsessed with fighting. Penn came from a wealthy family, so he wasn't fighting for the sake of money, but because he loved it. So much so that he earned a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt in only three years, which is a truly remarkable achievement. Penn's MMA career was pretty much the same. He didn't have an undefeated record, but he was a violent man who took out some of the best fighters of his era to win the lightweight and welterweight titles 
although his 155-pound title run still earns him the title of the lightweight GOAT by many. Penn won the belt by defeating Joe Stevenson in 2008 and made three successful title defenses against Sean Shirk, Kenny Florian, and Diego Sanchez before losing twice to Frankie Edgar. The Hawaiian then bounced back into the win column by knocking out Matt Hughes in only 21 seconds, making his fans believe that a second title run was possible. By then, however, Penn was out of his prime, and his next eight fights proved that. From 2011 to 2019, Penn fought eight times, with one draw and seven losses, taking tons of damage that could have easily been avoided if he stopped fighting at the right time. In his heyday, Diego Sanchez was a nightmare for his opponents, a true OG of the fight game who cared less about records and personal achievements and more about pleasing fight fans. Sanchez's illustrious career in MMA lasted two decades, where he fought 44 times, producing high-octane action every time he stepped inside the cage. But like the other guys mentioned in this list, Sanchez too fought beyond his expiration date and ended up taking more hits to his head than he should have. Not to mention his toxic professional relationship with Joshua Fabia, a self-proclaimed MMA coach who made things worse for the MMA icon. During his first four years of his career, Sanchez harnessed the power of a passing thunderstorm as he ripped apart everybody that came his way. Midway through his career, Sanchez bagged victories and suffered losses while producing some of the best fights in history including a barn burner against Clay Guida in 2009. In a sport that is filled with intense people, even those who put their bodies on the line seemed overwhelmed by Sanchez's vigorous eccentricity. For years, Sanchez made fight fans jump out of their seats until he couldn't fight with the same intensity in his final years in MMA. Sanchez was still beating bottom tier guys, but he couldn't hold a candle to better competition and fans wanted him to retire. But then, Diego unfortunately joined hands with self-awareness guru Joshua Fabia, whose troublesome attitude pissed UFC bigwigs to the point that the promotion parted ways with Sanchez in 2020. Many thought Sanchez would finally quit fighting and care about himself after he parted with the UFC, since he was in a bad spot mentally and physically. But he still continues to fight to this day, most recently losing to Austin Trout in a bare-knuckle fight by a doctor's stoppage. This one probably hurts the most. Tony Ferguson filled the hearts of his competitors with fear for nearly six years, leaving everyone he faced inside the cage bloodied up and broken, both physically and mentally. Ferguson's high octane and unorthodox approach to fighting was a nightmare to deal with for his opponents, and for years, nobody could crack his code. Ferguson would slice his opponents down with elbows sharper than a samurai sword and then break their will to fight with non-stop pressure. Most of his opponents were left gasping for air after a round or two of facing the monster that was Ferguson. But once the devil ran into the Demon Slayer, Justin Gaethje in 2020, it was all over. Since losing to Gaethje, Ferguson has lost five times, almost getting his arm broken by Charles Oliveira, getting controlled by Benel Dariush, getting brutally knocked out by Michael Chandler, and getting submitted two times in a row against Nate Diaz and Bobby Green. In his six consecutive losses, Ferguson has taken so much damage that people are starting to believe that he's showing signs of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, commonly known as CTE. Although these are mere speculations, there's every reason to believe that Tony's body doesn't react the way his brain wants it to, and the lack of synchronization is making him suffer against fighters he would have put away in gruesome manner in his heyday. Ferguson thinks he's still in his prime, and he still has a title run left in him, but honestly, he's not the fighter he once used to be, and it's tough watching him getting finished every now and then. These were just five of many UFC fighters who fought past their primes and took a ton of damage. Whose downfall hurt you the most? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.